Um, this webinar will last approximately one hour and you can see the agenda here on the screen. I'm going to start by going over what's new in SEMA Pro in the last release and then I'm going to pass it over to Jasper and Bart to go over what's new in Agri Footprint. Then we'll have about 10 to 15 minutes to answer some questions at the end. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm Paula and I'm a consultant at Prey. For those of you who don't know us, um, at Prey we put the metrics behind sustainability. Um, we've used our industry knowledge to provide cl clients with sustainability metrics for over 25 years. Um, these are the three consulting areas we focus on and today we're going to be specifically talking about delivery of LCA databases. Uh, so we're also the developers of SEMA Pro software, as most of you probably already know. Uh, the world's most widely used LCA software, and it's used in more than 80 countries, and we have over 3,000 users. Uh, we have partners across the world, including Blanc, who is here with us today. And um, also, we're thrilled that our SEMA Pro community is very active with all kinds of discussions, research, and participating in, in these kind of webinars as well. So what's new in SEMA Pro 8.1? Um, first, the largest software update um, for this release was the addition of a new function to allow users to export to ILCD format. Uh, the PEF standards have created a high demand for the ability to export to ILCD format. So we wanted to make this data exchange easier, so we implemented uh, this function. Uh, users can export core inventory data to ILCD format, but you can't yet export all of the documentation and all of the required data, but um, you do have all of the core inventory data. We're continuing to improve the mapping files that contain substance names, um, compartments, and units uh, when additional documentation becomes available from the JRC we will continue to update these. And then um, last, we want to continue to improve this function. We, we chose to release it at this time due to the high demand for this function and also to allow for users to uh, have input. Um, but we always like to hear your feedback um, about anything, but especially about this function, if you use it and you have any feedback, uh, we'd love to hear about it. So you can send an email directly to me or to the feedback at Prey Sustainability address um, here on the screen. And then in terms of database updates, uh, we're very excited to include the updated AgriFootprint database in this release, uh, which is exclusively available in SEMA Pro. And Jasper and Bart are here to explain more about what's new in that in that database. Um, for other databases, we updated the US LCI library to the latest version. Uh, one item to note is that we're advising users to be aware of the large number of dummy processes in this library. Uh, I think people that, that use the US LCI library frequently know already about this issue, um, we advise you to find proxy data from other sources to, to bridge the gaps within the database. But uh, there's a large demand for US LCI library, especially in the US, so we decided to include it even with, with all the dummy processes. Um, also, a, a number of the processes have become obsolete from the last version. So um, we created a replacement file that allows you to change the links over automatically to the newer version. And um, if you need more advice on how to use that replacement file, it's, you can look in the database update instructions. Uh, next, we have updated the ELCD library due to demand from the PATH project uh, to version 3.2. It includes about 170 new processes and products, but um, the focus of this release was really on 
data quality and documentation um, in the database. So for those of you who it's relevant for, there are about 190 ILCD entry level compliant data sets um, now in the database. And then um, the last smaller thing is that we corrected a few issues related to water flows in um, a few Plastics Europe data sets in the industry data library. Um, lastly, we have updated our end user licensing agreement to include the recent launch of SEMA Pro Share and Collect. Uh, we're very excited about SEMA Pro Share and Collect, which is our new web-based platform that makes it really easy and simple to view your LCA results and, and share them with it within your company. So if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to check it out at SEMAPro.com um, or on our website and you can get more information. Um, and now I am going to pass the screen over to Bart to talk about AgriFootprint in more detail. And also you guys, um, as a reminder, you can add questions in, in the chat box. Uh, if you have any questions about SEMA Pro, I can answer them. Um, also, as we go through AgriFootprint, we'll have time at the end to answer those questions. Yeah. Many, uh, many, many thanks, uh, Howda. We will now uh, uh, con con continue with uh, an, expl an explanation of AgriFootprint. Um, what's new in Archive Footprint, and uh, my colleague uh, Hart Hurlingen will also um, uh, provide you a demonstration in in uh, Cinepro of Archive Footprint uh, of the new Archive Footprint. Um, so, first of all, Archive uh, Footprint is an is an uh, database made by Blanc Consultants. Um, we are specialized in uh, food, all, uh, all uh, sustainability questions uh, about food. Uh, our, our core business is uh, life cycle assessment and uh, sustainable nutrition. So the connection between the LCA information and the nutritional values of, uh, of our food. Um, it was a bit of an introduction of uh, Blanc consultants. So what uh, Paula already said, um, it is, uh, it is uh, exclusively available uh, via Cinepro. Uh, the new version of Archive Footprint is available when you update your uh, license to the, yeah, to the new version. Um, uh, and Archive Footprint is a life cycle inventory database of um, agricultural and food processes. So what is included is uh, cultiv cultivation, uh, fertilizer production, uh, uh, transport uh, processes, but also uh, the, the transforming from, uh, from blend production to, to, uh, to uh, uh, to we to we find uh, 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 products. Um, there are three uh, predefined allocation options in Agri Footprint. That's uh, mass allocation, energy allocation, and economic allocation. Um, you can e you can select for each process. You can select which allocation you would uh, like uh, to use. Um, the, the new de-updated uh, land use uh, change tool is uh, the the output of that tool is fully integrated into the into this, uh, this new version of our footprint. Um, the our footprint is consistent with the life cycle uh, impact assessments ILCD um, and recipe, so you can also uh, use it. To uh, perform your uh, your screenings for an uh, an uh, an uh, product and a mental footprint uh, study, it uh, it also contains company specific data. Here are 
two of the first companies who uh, provided data for the first version of our footprint. Um, and in the now in the update, uh, also data of needless is 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 integrated. Um, Archive uh, footprint is uh, fully open, so it's uh, it's uh, there are almost only units processes included, and it means that the user can also adapt the uh, the uh, the data of a certain process. So if you want to adapt the uh, the, the amount of energy used in a certain uh, process, you can adapt it. So it's not a system process, it's not a, a black box. Um, all the documentation is also uh, updated and it's, uh, it is uh, publicly available on our website. Here you, can, here you can find all the methodology, the choices we made and the, uh, the uh, data sources of the uh, data. Um, his version of Archive Footprint is reviewed by the Ministry of Health, Welfare and Sport. It's uh, uh, critically reviewed uh, and the first version of Archive Footprint was reviewed by the uh, RMIT University in uh, Australia. Then, um, yeah, we saw uh, last year some nice um, examples how uh, Archive Footprint was used. Um, we are also in contact with Hesley and they will update the, the new uh, data of our footprint to their uh, to their own uh, product design tool of food. Um, we also saw that in most screening studies of the uh, of the food uh, product and and product and environmental footprint that actually footprint was used. I believe that out of the out of the eleven food um, uh, screenings I saw, there were at least six who were using Archive Footprint. Um, another uh, example is uh, TruePost, who used the Archive Footprint data to assess the uh, natural risk capital of some uh, countries. Um, we also saw uh, in, uh, in many LCAs in the uh, scientific uh, journals like uh, Cleaner Production and the, and the International Journal of LCA, we saw uh, that Archive Footprint was used. Also uh, interesting to see. And also the, uh, the uh, equal label used uh, the data from Archive Footprint to assess the impact and on which uh, we, which requirements did they have to state on the uh, equal label products. So that's an overview on uh, how the first version of our footprint was used. Some, uh, yeah, to a little bit of a feeling, uh, but yeah. Then the making of the the, the, the first ver of the second version of our footprint, the main input was the, the first version, but also um, a lot of other databases and knowledge uh, providers. Um, for instance, the, e the, ELC, the ELCD database was used, especially for the energy related uh, processes. Um, all our knowledge of the food system, uh, how it is integrated, um, data from uh, literature, um, rules about uh, how to calculate, uh, for instance, logging gas emissions and emissions due to peat oxidation uh, based on the I, I, IPCC. Uh, I already explained the, uh, that the other results of the land use change tool are integrated in our footprint. Also, we received uh, 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 prime, prime data from companies, but also out of uh, other uh, data sources, stat statistical databases, for instance, the FAO for the yields per hectare are integrated. Uh, a lot of uh, life cycle assessment experience 
pathologies, and then in the end, you have the AGI footprint. So here are a bit the building blocks uh, of the AGI footprint database. Um, okay, and what's new now in uh, our AGI footprint uh, or the second version of AGI footprint? There is a an, uh, an, uh, tremendous uh, increase of crop cultivation LCIs. There were approximately uh, 30 LCIs included in the first version, and now it's over uh, 300 uh, LCIs. Um, and a couple of these uh, crop uh, um, um, expansions come comes from the bills cultivation, but also the, uh, the bills processing uh, is included. Uh, rice is also uh, included in our footprint, and also the, the, the milling of rice and the downstream uh, processes. Then um, there are uh, the last year the, Euro the, the European Commission released a uh, methodology on how to um, assess um, the um, how to uh, perform a, a LCAs of cattle of a cattle. So that's the dairy system, but also the meat system, and we integrated some LCIs uh, based on this uh, methodology. And, and my colleague uh, Hobbs will show also uh, this LCI in the demonstration. Um, a lot of new uh, new uh, information on food uh, uh, processing was included. Um, also, I explained it. Meatless, it's a company. They uh, provided uh, companies companies specific uh, data, and it's now fully fully integrated. Uh, several uh, products are included. The, the new uh, land use change tool is integrated, um, and the uh, in each LCI contains now also. An uh, data quality score. Uh, it is uh, fully integrated in uh, in each LCI, and it's uh, based on the IELTS CD. Uh, it's uh, critically reviewed by the Ministry of Health, Welfare, and Sport. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, um, in a lot of interesting new uh, LCIs, and also some. Uh, some uh, bugs were fixed. So this is in a, a short overview on, on what's new. Um, here you see a list of the uh, of the LCIs uh, divided into different uh, 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 life cycle phases. So the what I explained that the crops uh, was on a, a, a tremendous increase from 30 to more than 300. Um, also, the inter the intermediate uh, products are um, are um, increased, and with intermediate uh, products from from uh, from processing, you mean uh, the uh, for instance the soybean meal oil and soybean uh, meal uh, kinds of uh, products. Also, the uh, feed compounds. Um, they are uh, the same, and the food products are increased, and the animal production systems. We hope to um, to increase it in the uh, in next version of, uh, of our footprint. About the um, so yeah, it's almost uh, three times more LC LCIs. Uh, there is a full uh, product list. Uh, on our website, so if you don't have access to Schema Pro, or um, yeah, you have an old version of Schema Pro, and you are uh, you are curious which uh, products are included, it is uh, you can uh, search for the list on the uh, Footprint website, and there will also be an, uh, a list 
with all the impacts of the of a lot of uh, products will also be uh, released on the internet uh, within uh, I would say one week. Okay, uh, then the geographical scope. Here you see the a global map um, and also um, of which country we now have LCIs included. And the greener the, the country, the more LCIs we have. So for, uh, for Holland, we have a lot of uh, LCIs. Um, that's basically also a lot of market mixes. And um, yeah, that's a bit an overview. And to highlight this a bit more, um, here we, uh, we provide an, uh, a map only of wheat. So here you see the, uh, the coverage of wheat cultivation LCIs. Uh, it was only in Western Europe in the first version, and now we have a global uh, coverage almost. Um, yeah, maybe it's also good to say because um, the US is is not green here, but we are currently it's uh, it is for the new version. We are currently integrating the um, US LCIs. Of, uh, of six crop of all the states um, uh, from uh, from the um, USDA hated base digital commons. Okay, um, one slide about the direct land use change tool. Um, the um, it's always complex to uh, to have data. Uh, and you're somewhere um, downstream, and you want to have knowledge about the uh, about the impact of land trans transformation. So the the greenhouse gas emissions related to land transformation. With this tool, you can you can uh, calculate uh, with uh, depending on the knowledge you have, um, you can. You can calculate your greenhouse gas emissions. In our in our footprint, we uh, we pre pre defined based on the um, based on average the uh, the um, the uh, the land use change emissions. But you can um, if you have more information on the previous land use. You can also uh, provide. Uh, uh, you can you can update his information in our footprint. This data with the new information of the uh, direct land use change assessment tool. Um, the the previous version, the first version, was uh, was for free. It was an ex, uh, an, um, an Excel uh, tool. Um, if you want to have access to the with a new tool, you can uh, contact uh, Guillaume Jan. His email address is uh, uh, is hello to uh, yeah uh, to uh, discuss various licensing options. Then uh, an overview of uh, products included: so fertilizer, uh, plant production, animal production, transport. Uh, it's all integrated. Also the slaughtering processes. Um, then what's next? What are our what are, are our ambitions for the next versions? Um, that's what I explained, the integration of the USDA agricultural LCIs. We're now busy with capital goods. Um, we ex we expect that in most um, uh, for, for most uh, food systems, the capital goods won't have a real contrib contribution. But uh, for instance, for greenhouses, it is uh, wise to uh, to include capital goods. So we are uh, now busy with it, with that pesticide reduction. That's a really interesting uh, one because nobody has uh, data on pesticide production. So we are also using the uh, data source of green of the 80s who's, uh, to, uh, to also include the, the pesticide production. Then the animal production system. We now have 
uh, we now integrated LCIs of uh, Borg, uh, the Harry system, uh, uh, Broilers, and laying hands. And um, yeah, we hope to to increase this for an, uh, for more countries. And maybe maybe in maybe in, in, in interesting to include also your uh, products to uh, yeah to show your impact and your um, to your suppliers and to all stakeholders. Um, you can also get involved more. Um, there are a lot of uh, hate gaps still in food. Every every everybody conducting um, LCAs of uh, food know some hate gaps. For for example, uh, here a uh, uh, photo of uh, cacao beans, cacao processing. There is almost. Uh, no data on that uh, process in the uh, literature. Um, we also uh, provide a service that we include your uh, your own uh, products in Agri Footprints. Then we also provide an, uh, an, uh, a performance report in which um, we uh, uh, state your impact um, compared to maybe another uh, baseline. Uh, we, we also provide uh, parameterized uh, um, LCIs, LCAs, um, because, for instance, the cultivation LCIs, you can adapt the, uh, the, the amount of fertilizers you, uh, you, you provide to the area, but this will, this will not directly uh, in influence, for instance, the love and gas emissions. So, but yeah, we have a lot of uh, more more detailed LCIs available. Uh, one example you can find um, it's freely available on our website on the Agrupin website. It's a uh, truck uh, trans transportation process. Okay, um, if you want to learn more about agricultural LCAs and how are methane emissions calculated and love and gas emissions, um, what do you have to do, take into, into account for which kind of allocations, uh, etc. We organize next month a training in Utrecht, the Netherlands, in which we um, explain uh, more about the background of uh, agricultural and food LCAs. Um, we will exp uh, explain the landscape of food LCAs, who is doing food, food LCAs, why, and um, yeah, what will be next in the coming years. Um, we will explain the principles, the basic principles of the LCA methodology. Uh, we also will uh, explain a lot about the European uh, uh, product and product and product and Footprint and a lot of exercises, uh, especially on food. So, um, if you are interested in to, to get more uh, ex more experience with food LCAs, it would be uh, really of an in interest. Okay, now I switch to uh, to my colleague Bart Hurlinger, who will switch to uh, Singapore. Here with it. Okay, so Jasper just explained uh, what what kind of changes we have uh, implemented in the new version of uh, Agri Footprint, but maybe it's a good idea to look at it uh, in Cima Pro so you actually get an understanding of what it looks like. Um, one of the uh, uh, more obvious improvements is that we have now a more elaborate uh, folder structure, so that makes it easier for you to find the process that you're looking for. Um, as Jasper already mentioned, for example, the plant production increased, uh, the number of LCIs for plant production increased from 30 to around 300. And therefore, we decided to split it up in different uh, categories. For example, the cereals you can see here on the screen. Um, there are lots of different cultivations listed here for, for example, barley grain, but also for maize, oats, um, 
and wheat uh, and rye, etc. So this is all in that folder. And we did the same for legumes, oil seeds, etc. Um, hopefully that will make it easier for you to find what you're looking for. Um, what is also, and we did a similar thing for the other uh, categories in, uh, in uh, Archive Footprint 2. So for example, the animal production is now split in different uh, folders and the same for feed and intermediate products. Also what is maybe important to not highlight is that food has now moved to the, um, to the main uh, folder or to the level one folder and you can find it here. And again, there are different subcategories of food uh, listed below there. Another um, uh, interesting addition to uh, <coughs> the new database is that we have um, <coughs> tried to score the data quality for all the different processes. And you can find it actually in the overall process comments listed here at the bottom. So for especially for people involved in the PEF projects, this will really be helpful to assess the overall data quality of your uh, system. So this is all listed here. Similar as the uh, Archive Footprint uh, version 1, there is also some uh, other metadata listed here. For example, the amount of fertilizers added to the process and uh, some of the most important data sources. So you can all find that in in CIMA Pro itself, and it's also listed in the documentation on the website. Um, another important thing for the people involved in the PEF is the uh, PEF compliant uh, uh, beef system, especially the dairy system. Uh, as you may know, it is enforced by the, uh, the Joint Research Center to use the IDF allocation on the farm and economic allocation on the slaughterhouse. And we have to, uh, developed a PEF compliant LCIs for this to make it easier for you to do this. And, and also the emission modeling is now in accordance to what is set in the guidance there. So you have the uh, European environmental assessment uh, modeling for that. <clears throat> Another uh, thing that you uh, that is important to know to say here is that only the farm, uh, the dairy farm itself, is allocated using IDF, but the rest of the uh, uh, supply chain is still modeled using economic allocation or mass or energy, dependent on which library you select. So this is a just a really brief overview of uh, what the Agri Footprint 2.0 looks like in CIMA Pro. And I really encourage you to just uh, have a look yourself in the new version because that really helps uh, in, yeah, in, in exploring what we have uh, made uh, in the last few months. That's it. Um, are there already some questions? Uh, I don't see uh, a question in the chat box. Uh, maybe we can also have a look in one of the LCRs. So because I, I think there were also <coughs> some people attending who never used CIMA Pro. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so I can uh, open up, for example, a barley grain. And that's it. So what you see here, in uh, and that's basically the same for all LCIs in CIMA Pro, you see um, the main outputs of the process, and then a whole list of things uh, that are uh, uh, inputs. So that can either be inputs from nature, such as uh, the, the amounts of water or the occupation of land, or a transformation. So this is all drawn from the land use change tool, in this case zero, but for others it will be half a value. And inputs from the technosphere. So that will be used, uh, it will be, for example, energy used uh, during the cultivation, uh, the amounts of manure. Uh, and here you see a whole list of different fertilizers and uh, some emissions to air resulting from the use of fertilizer, manure, and, uh, and land transformation indeed. So those are all listed here. Um, next to that you also have the emissions from the use of pesticides. As Jasper already mentioned, we are still working on the uh, 
uh, pesticide input, so the production of pesticides, but the emissions are already included in the LCIs. Okay. So, uh, maybe a question uh, to you all, is there an interest to maybe a few in a, in a specific LCI? No? Then, so we haven't received an, uh, a question in the chat box. So I do see there are a few questions coming in. Okay. So Okay, indeed. So we are now reading the Questions. So, are they preferred? Okay. Um, one of the questions is um, if if there are uh, preferred uh, alloc allocation options. Um, so we didn't um, uh, predefined the, a certain allocation option for you. Because it's really handy uh, within an LCA if you want to do an um, and, uh, and uh, sensitivity <coughs> assessment is really handy to have already the the um, the, alloc the different allocation approaches uh, within one database. So performing a sensitivity assessment becomes uh, yeah it becomes uh, quite quite easy. It's quite user friendly. Um, and also, um, yeah, it's a never-ending, uh, uh, never-ending discussion which allocation um, to use. Yeah, but if if you are involved in one of the uh, uh, PATH pilots, then often there is a preferred allocation, and that's been being decided by your technical secretary. Yeah. yeah. Are there? And that can differ between different uh, pilots. Is there a production system such as organic versus conventional fair trade? Yes, yeah. it's a really good uh, question. Um, it is uh, still on our wish list, um, but for now all the uh, LCIs are of uh, are for conventional systems. So, um, but yeah, it's one of uh, of also my uh, personal. Wish list, but yeah, it has to do that. Uh, that a lot of LCAs are are they performed of for conventional systems, and other lots for uh, organic or fair trade or you know, whatever uh, kind of systems. Next question. If we have a soil quality indicator. Um. Yeah, so uh, Agri Footprint is in line with the ILCD, so the uh, Life Cycle Impact Assessment. Uh, one of the recommended impact categories yeah, of the um, of, uh, um, ILCD is uh, land, land use, and in that one, there the, uh, um, it's based on the soil organic matter. Um, but there are some um, drawbacks. Draw Next to that yeah. effort. Yeah. Okay, then that's it so far. Okay. 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 Uh, we. I think it's wise to wait for uh, for two more minutes. Maybe it's good to you show. Um, what are the impact categories included for barley? So maybe you can run uh, an, uh, the, yeah. the Belgium uh, barley, for instance. Yeah, so what is uh, important uh, to note is that uh, we do not really provide 
impacts, but we only provide the emissions that uh, can relate to an impact. And the impact itself is determined by the impact assessment method. And that is something that we didn't develop, but that's already being developed by other parties. Yeah, but that's, For example, the ILCD or the recipe methods. Yeah, but that's all included in Shima Core. And that's already included in Shima Core. Yeah. Maybe it's good. Yeah, come yeah. yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are more questions coming in. There's a question about water footprint. How are all water flows withdrawal release and venture it to uh, the water footprint. Maybe yeah. you can explain something about the water scarcity method because uh, yeah so we use uh, we only include the blue water flows and that means uh, the uh, flows from uh, artificial irrigation but the green water and the gray water as uh, the water footprint calls uh, them is not included. So uh, natural rainfall is, is, is not included in a data set. The same as the uh, gray water is also not there. Yeah. So we only have the blue water footprint, and that's actually in line also with uh, the methodologies that we mentioned earlier, so yeah. the impact assessment methods. And uh, water flows are um, regionalized, so you can also run um, for instance, the impact assessment uh, of uh, the water scarcity. So it's also uh, taken into account. So in the, indeed, currently it's based on the on the data from Hoekstra, but if there is any new data, we will of course uh, consider to include that if it's of sufficient quality. But at the moment, I'm not aware of any uh, more recent information about it. Uh, maybe it's also good to state uh, maybe something about, uh, we also had a lot of questions about the pesticides. Um, there is, um, we included the, the pesticides, we did quite an intensive uh, test study to include the pesticide inventories. Um, all, the, uh, all the pesticides, so the active ingredients, are um, are um, connected to also characterization factors. We did a check on uh, on that, so uh, have no pesticides are included without um, characterization factors in the um, in the impact assessment. Otherwise, you will have a flow which is which is not characterized. Um, about the fate of the pesticides. Um, all the emissions are are now going to the com to the to the soil com to, to the soil com soil com compartment. But you, as a user, if you have more information on um, how the the pesticides uh, how the pesticides are sprayed, um, yeah, the weather condition, uh, the the type of soil, etc. You can easily um, um, update the fate uh, to the also to uh, to include more drift emissions, etc. But yeah, because this is a uh, default database, um, it really uh, you really have to have uh, detailed information about uh, climate uh, condition, etc. On a certain uh, spot um, to uh, yeah to uh, to um, uh, to include more detailed uh, phase information and compartment. Com um, are there any fruit trees uh, production included? Um, we That's a great question. Yeah. Actually, we are working on that for the next version of uh, Agri Footprint. Yeah. So there is no fruit included yet, but it, it probably will be in our next update. Yes, so this is the bananas. The apples, pears, um, etc. Then for the there's a question about uh, what how the USA LCIs are uh, organized. Um, currently, it is an 
the data that is in there for the US is on a US average, but in the, our next update we will uh, integrate uh, the LCI commons data from the USDA and that is actually on the state level, so that will be more specific. Then there is a, a more detailed question on what fruit will be included. Um, the uh, citrus and almonds is currently not in our scope, but oil seed production is already included. Yeah, so the uh, coconut uh, oil, palm oil, that's included. Um, yeah. Uh, Olive growth, no, that's <laughs> not included. Uh, no, thank you, many thanks. Uh, citrus almonds, not included. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a, a question how does Agri Footprints compare to other databases like EcoEvent or the World, uh, World Food Lifecycle database? Um, EcoEvent, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the amount of LCIs uh, of agricultural food LCIs in EcoEvent is uh, a bit limited, um, and uh, the relation with the World Food Lifecycle Database. So we don't know because that database is is not released yet. It's not publicly available. But we are, of course, in contact with EcoEvent and the, and, the, and the World Food Lifecycle Database about our uh, methodologies. There are not a lot of uh, differences. Um, of course, in, uh, there, there are differences, but uh, we are trying to, uh, to decrease the differences uh, as much as possible. Also, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, have uh, pilots. Um, we hope that a lot of uh, uh, guidance uh, came from there, but from uh, especially from cultivation, there is a lot of alignment or uh, whatever. So, um, but we are talking to uh, to those uh, parties to align all the time. Uh, Mm -hmm. then, then there is a question about uh, what causes differences between countries is, and if that is mainly based on the yield or if there are also other uh, issues that are taken into account and the answer is yes. We also have uh, specific information on the amounts of pesticides provided per country heavy metals. and the heavy metals from uh, manure and the amounts of manure and also the uh, amounts of fertilizer differs between countries. So if you want to know more where we get all this information from, I really encourage you to look in the uh, processes themselves. <coughs> For the pesticides, the literature references are listed there in, as, a pro, uh, as a comment next to the elementary flow. And then the overall process comments, there is a list of the data that we use for all the other inputs. And also, of course, in the overall reports on the website, this is explained. Yeah, and um, some flows are uh, are uh, re are regionalized, like for instance the water flows. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's also, and also the transport. Um, um, for instance, there is also a difference when you um, um, when you have uh, maize for uh, out of Argentina or maize from France. Uh, located in the Netherlands, for instance, there is of course a uh, difference in uh, transportation. Also, the uh, the o the o the um, the uh, trucks, barges, um, o the o the oceanic, oceanic ships, and um, 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 trains are included. Maybe it's also good to have a look at the. Transport uh, LCI to, to, because there you can also find really detailed information of also, for instance, the trucks with all the differences in um, from Euro Zero to uh, to Euro Six trucks. Um, so uh, also with uh, many uh, load 
factors and uh, uh, load the mass of the capacities. Yeah. Specific question about co co products. Are all data modelized with one data set with X co products like grains and straw or wheat? Or are some of the data sets split in X data sets? One per co product so that specific specific inputs can be applied. So this question is related to uh, splitting the unit process in more unit processes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for cultivation, that's not uh, uh, possible because you cannot physically split one hectare of uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, grain. Uh, you cannot specifically provide um, fertilizers to, to the straw or uh, specifically provide fertilizer to the grain. So for um, for cultivation that's not possible, but for instance the maize processing, the wet milling, there we um, the, 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 the process is split in many unit uh, processes. So you can actually indeed um, go into depth of, of the process of, for instance, one plant. So one wet milling plant is divided into many many other plants. That will uh, show you an example. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so here you can see that there are um, that the maize wet milling is actually split into a lot of different steps with a lot of intermediate products uh, coming out and going back into the next processing step. For for example, wet milling, uh, we did a similar thing for uh, 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 a grain, for example, where you can actually where do you you have the crop coming off the field. Well, one part is dried, so the grain is dried and stored, while the straw is used elsewhere. So the uh, specific drying of the grain has been split off the cultivation process and modeled separately. Um, maybe also related to uh, one uh, remark. Uh, also, we receive questions on, um, because we also allocate sometimes to the straw, and in some countries it is uh, not yielded, so it is more a an, uh, an soil improver than a, a really a, a product. Um, in in such cases, you can easily uh, you can easily put the allocation factor on zero percent for straw because a grain is the the, the main uh, the main outcome. Uh, so all the emissions, all the impact will be allocated to the grain and nothing to the uh, to the uh, um, to the uh, straw. Yeah. Um, yeah. About crop rotations, that's another question we uh, sometimes receive. Um, is it included or yes? Yes, it is partly included on the, because of the way we model it. Uh, for instance, the manure, um, it is uh, the way we yeah, model the manure input. It is uh, here you take the, uh, the crop rotation into it. Count. Okay, um, I think uh, we answered all questions. Um, Paula, can we go? Uh, I think the other one that, uh, that will end. Uh, yeah, oh, last slide for more information the website. We also have an Agri Footprints LinkedIn group uh, in which you can ask. Questions, so uh, and uh, he will provide the answers. So it is shared with uh, a lot of people. Um, you can contact us also directly. This uh, information is also this email address is also included in each LCI. So if you have a, a question about a specific LCI, please uh, ask us, and we hope to provide you the answer within uh, one day. And uh, a little reminder, there's an, uh, an LCA training of agriculture and food products next month. Uh, if, you want, if you want to have more information, please visit uh, the blog website. There you can find uh, easily uh, uh, information about, more information about this training.
So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone so much for attending the webinar today. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact one of us. Um, you guys are going to receive a follow-up email with um, answers to the questions and also a copy of, of the presentation from today. So uh, thanks again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.